Dear chess friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. First of all, Happy New Year to everyone. Wish you successful chess year 2023. I, I'm coming here like today with two videos. Uh, so kind of like New Year edition. There are two variations. And first of all, the line that I would like to share with you. Uh, there is no official name, but I would call it Nihal Serene variation. Probably most of my viewers are familiar with this uh, name, Nihal Serene, but those who are not familiar, it's uh, Indian kid, prodigy, extremely, extremely talented, close to 2700, definitely future top 10. And uh, it's been a while I paid attention. He's playing something very interesting uh, against D4. And uh, well, I did some research and I would like to share with you my, uh, my ideas here in this variation. And hopefully you might find it's very useful. Now, so uh, after d4, d5, c4, e6, so the normal move order of queen's game with decline, knight c3. By the way, I would like immediately to highlight and emphasize uh, that after knight f3, I, I'm not sure about this move order h6, but on the other hand, knight f3, besides that it's the move order of Catalan, it also restricts white options, if not Catalan, right? So it's already... Maybe we cannot play exchange variation of Queen's Gambit decline and so on. So we in this specific video, we're going to talk about move knight c3 and h6. Like in the beginning, I thought it's very surprising. It's very surprising. Cannot be good. Cannot be good. Uh, an obvious idea to control g5 square and to prevent in some line bishop g5 move like mostly happens in Queen's Gambit decline. And then on the other hand, I felt like why it cannot work if nowadays a6 is very fashionable move many grandmasters are playing this move and it's considered to be a pretty reliable idea so if a6 which is rather waiting move possible here why we cannot play h6 which has a clear point of controlling g5 square now we have also of course like well-known moves like c6 knight of six bishop e7 bishop before all those moves c5 uh, all those moves leading to mainstream openings, right? So here we are talking about surprise weapon, like without entering mainstream theory. So, and that's a, a huge benefit of this variation. Now, after h6, white obviously has a lot of choices. Now, I would like to mention the very first question when I mention this move that I get, what happens after a4? Because we have a similar idea which so-called martial gambit after after third move c6 so here e4 is very challenging very critical move that uh i mean also in many cases the reason uh black players afraid to play c6 because here we have martial gambit bishop b4 and bishop d2 sacrificing pawn on d4 with very uh very very heavy theory i would say it's very hard to play this variation without knowledge of at least 20 moves for black you can easily lose now so here actually it appears that in this specific line the situation is much much better for black and the reason for that that we have actually c6 square available for our knight so we don't have our pawn on c6 so in some lines we can get knight c6 move now after bishop d2 queen d4 it's not so dangerous i would say so knight, knight c6 will come soon with tempo after we take on a4. Uh, so I think like it's not enough compensation for the pawn. So at least it's considered to be not a uh, not a dangerous line. And after knight c3, we play c5, the same move that we play in martial gambit, but we have just extra move h6, which is by no means useless, right? It's it's like pretty useful move, like just controlling g5 as always. So here we, we covered in this line after... Uh, after e4, so that's a big deal. Now, I would like to mention that, of course, like e3 move cannot be super dangerous. It's always playable, of course, but uh, white blocks bishop on c1, so it cannot be uh, like super uh, super challenging after this. Of course, white would rather prefer his bishop on f4. So we just have knight f6 and normal play. Now, uh, let's focus on uh, other moves. Like, first of all, I would like to mention here cd5, ed5. We get this pawn structure. Let's say bishop f4, something similar to exchange variation of a queen's gambit decline. So let's say we cannot. Uh, so usually we have the position c6 bishop f4, 
and now so here we get the opportunity and it's one of the major ideas we play bishop d6 in one move and by the way the players who are familiar with some theory in queen's gambit decline they know that one of the variations for black with the pawn on c6 uh, and bishop e7 move there is a variation bishop e7 d6 wasting tempo uh, on bishop move but pursuing exchange of dark square bishop and it considered pretty solid variation pretty reliable so here we have it's one move with a pretty useful move h6 so why not uh now we have it here and the same applies to knight f3 so and that's one of the ideas we don't need to stick with bishop e7 we can play bishop d6 in one move now uh so this is one line uh, of course uh bishop f4 right away we can actually meet with immediate bishop d6 and once again it's the same benefit that i explained before we are playing bishop d6 in one move and finally i would like to mention knight f3 so we play knight f6 mm, now e3 once again bishop is stuck on c1 very playable line i don't think there should be any issues here uh, now bishop f4 as we already know runs into bishop d6 everything is good and now in my opinion the most critical line uh yes i have a little bit of bias here catalan setup with the knight on c3 why not uh, and then that that was my first thought actually when i noticed the games with h6 i thought uh, what's going on with catalan setup how black is going to justify move h6 because usually we don't see h6 too often in catalan that black plays at least at the early stage of the opening right so here there is very interesting setup uh nihal serene showed how to play these positions so knight comes to c6 usually we don't see this and uh, the move considered to be not great with the pawn being stuck on c7 but there is a very special setup bishop goes to d6 castle castle and now we have this position where the theory starts and uh, very important uh, now by the way very useful g5 square is covered otherwise let's say without h6 bishop g5 would be very annoying and uh, now so th there is a question d what, what to do with this pawn c4 and our main idea what what this setup achieves is we want e5 so for instance the cr the critical line in my opinion b3 take take e5 and we have a very interesting uh like i would say some new ideas here new pawn structure uh new position very fresh not so many games so far in my opinion black is doing not bad at all and uh, it looks like just another possible option for black in the in the lines with d4 d5 in uh, in so-called queen's gambit decline direction now for those who are interested uh and uh, would like to get uh, a very advanced pgn file uh, please go to my webpage askavruk.com you will see the link in my description so where you can download detailed file with all the lines uh covered like with existing theory and of course a lot of novelties and there are as you know if those who know like my webpage is actually three different levels uh three different levels you can get an easy version of this or you can get extremely detailed uh file for this variation and uh, hopefully it's something that you might be interested to have this kind of surprising weapon especially nowadays when there are many rapid and blitz tournaments online tournaments could be a uh, very nice idea in my opinion now uh if you enjoy this video this material and you're looking for my future projects please subscribe to my channel click on notification battle and of course i always encourage leave the comment please comment what do you think about this line if you have any questions i'll try to answer every every post thank you very much very much for watching and i'll see you on the next video